that we get restarted. Because it's value added industry exporting fiberboard instead of firewood, exporting uh, fish finished rather than to be sent to China to be, uh, uh, to be processed there. That's going to bring the companies with the corporate tax base to build it up. In the meantime, on the cut side, our three largest uh, general fund users are the Corrections Department, the Health Department, Education Department. I will work on outputs to make sure, and not just have a fight on inputs, to make sure we're getting what we pay for and can take the cuts we need to take. Mr. Dunleavy. Um, so we have to grab down and contain the operating budget. I can't emphasize that anymore. That's going to be the enemy of the future of Alaska because if you have spend of 6, 8, 10% a year, you can't keep up with that with permanent fund earnings or taxes. Our economy is not growing at that rate. So you have to ramp that down to about 2% growth a year. If we do that, we can service that with our fees and our lawsuits that go into the CBR. You also have to grow the economy. It's the only way out of this. We have to use our resources in the state of Alaska. We have timber stands in the state of Alaska that just rot and fall over or burn. We don't use that. We have to get the oil in the pipeline that we just discovered here the last several years. We have to have a rolling exploration development concept and a capital budget. Again, if you have an operating budget that is out of control, you won't have a capital budget to build Alaska, to build infrastructure, to go and find uh, new new mining operations, new mining finds, new mining plants, oil uh, oil plays, et cetera, et cetera. So ramp that operating budget down, no more growth than 2%. Grow the economy, and we can make the last work for all of us. Thank you. Mr. Heikis. A wise man once said, when your outgo exceeds your income, your upkeep will be your downfall. So we're living on, right now, the, the legislature and is living on $140 a barrel of oil, and we're down to 70 or 80 And uh, that has my plan would be the Alaska Republican oil gas co-op that I wrote down that would essentially lower our gas prices, the fuel prices at the pump, to about a dollar a gallon, dollar ten in the highly populated areas, and about two dollars a gallon out in the bush. This would be for gas and diesel, then would create a second permanent fund. That's sustainable because the oil is going to keep coming out of the ground. We can take our oil and, and refine it here in Alaska in kind, rather than pay federal dollars for it. Rather than the legislature and the uh, governor being able to shoot holes in it, whatever budgets they want, um, this would benefit every Alaskan every day they go to work or stay home or go play golf like I want to do and the diesel prices and the villages would also benefit from it too. Thank you. Mr. Lotku. My vision is an Alaska. If I'll be governor, I'll build whole Alaska is then whole refinery. Everybody who is over 20 years in Alaska, I change your driver license, go gas station more than to the land. And I want to respect, and I want to bring here the company, not BP. BP, when I, they moved in Alaska, when I worked in North Slope 25 years ago, 30 years ago, was 80 people, 80 percent people from Alaska work in North Slope, make money, support the family, everybody happy. And now it's only 15 percent from Alaska. And my time, nobody work in North Slope from another country or another state. And that we help the budget our economy and people lay that off and we use our budget. Our budget is underground now and I know a lot of people who came here from the United States to build this gas pipeline, not foreign country. Foreign country kick us down. Thank you for uh, paying attention. Thank you. Mr. Sheldon. Yeah, we need to bring ACES back, sir. Palin's ACES uh, SB21 is no good for the state of Alaska. I voted yes that we need to tax our oil companies because it's important that we're only making 12 cents on the dollar right now with our oil. That's where we get our money. Let's tax them up. Let's do 10-year contracts with them. Not the House, not the Senate, not the Governor will be able to change until the 10-year contract is up. This is why they ran the last time. We will allow them to run this time. We have a budget called 81-9-10 plan. 81% will cover the umbrella of the state of Alaska. 9% will be for infrastructure. 300 million will go to the House, the Senate, and our administration. 10% of it will be rolled into the, into the CBR fund, which each commissioner under our state will take a cut. It'll be one pencil out of 10. We can streamline our government to a point where we can find out what's going on with our dollars. We need to take a state budget. I think it's a uh, state audit. I think that's really important to figure out where our money's at. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. 
This is our last forum question before we move into audience questions. You'll have 60 seconds to respond, and we'll start with Mr. Dunleavy. The state of Alaska has been operating on a minimal capital budget. The shackles of the state's ability to move the needed capital projects forward, which impacts business and community development. At what level do you feel the capital budget should be funded to address infrastructure needs in Alaska? So as mentioned earlier, uh, our capital budget has been in jeopardy for some time because the operating budget gets out of control. So you have to control that operating budget. I can't emphasize that anymore. Um, going forward, we have to decide what projects we want. And in order, once we do that, we can determine what the size of the capital budget should be in, in, in the laws of also get a match with the federal government. But you really need to be looking at a minimum, in my opinion, of two to three hundred million dollars a year going forward to actually start to refurbish your infrastructure, build new roads, uh, take a look at ports, build the state of Alaska. And so, in the, in two to three hundred million dollars, I think, starting out, but if we contain the operating budget and we increase our revenues from these fines on the slope, we will be able to grow the capital budget and grow Alaska. We're not going to be able to get out of this without growing Alaska. We're not going to be able to grow Alaska without a viable capital budget. So we're looking at about two to three hundred million dollars to start now and moving forward. Thank you. Mr. Heikis. I've watched um, a lot of things go on in Alaska and I've watched a lot of projects not be funded that should have been funded like a move from Juneau to Willow. That would be one of my priorities. Um, even if we just dug a slab out there, put in some trenches for some toilet facilities and set up a tent city and then moved, I just moved our legislature there, we get it done for $10 million. And I can guarantee you they would be in a hurry to do something to help get the buildings out of there and get it out to Juneau where, where we have more access. We voted to move it to Willow, it hasn't moved to Willow. Um, that's where I would put part of the emphasis. I'd give them a tent and a computer and then uh, help them be satisfied. And I know we're supporting, supporting a legislative building in Anchorage well, they'll just have to learn to run their, run their computer from home. Um, when the legislative session is over, it's going to be over. And uh, what won't be fun is that's one place where we can save money, even in the capital and the operating budgets. Mr. Halatku. My vision, call the gold from Alaska. No more Canada, Russia, or Japan. I talked to already with the president from Alaska, we said, bank, we need to put the gold over there, make bars, gold, silver, platinum. When we got the gold, we got trade. When we got this, we got the economy. And this uh, re uh, resource from Alaska, we need to use an hour and then we need to help our economy because a lot of people, they have no jobs and uh, the gold go over there. Somebody get the money and nobody don't know where they go. And we need to do this. Uh, I can uh, protect the low middle class and the businesses, uh, low taxes if we got the gold. That is mean the trade and economy for us. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Sheldon. Yes, our capital budgets are wasting money and we're uh, doing our projects at 65 cents on the dollar right now. The state of Alaska has to become more dependent and more sovereign. I think that what we need to do is we need to fire up a steel factory, we need to fire up a cement factory in the state of Alaska, and we need to get more technical support so that we can clean up that 35 cents that we're wasting. Now under our 81910 plan that I just talked about, we'll be putting aside around $935 million to start up these projects. These projects will be privatized, 51% will go to the state, 49% uh, will go to private, private businesses. We need to take ownership of our state. We're only, we only own 1%. Texas owns 99%. We have one refinery. They have 30 refineries. There's something wrong with this picture. If the United States of America goes into trouble, then we get affected immediately by it. We have to be more independent and take care of ourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Treadwell. I rode up with uh, somebody who's uh, doing construction at Prudhoe Bay. Uh, this morning and uh, as I look at what I've done in my career which is in just in the last four years helping bring three to uh, four hundred million dollars worth of investment to Alaska in the Arctic we have to bring lots of investment to Alaska in the Arctic we have to bring 12 billion dollars to fill up the pipeline 12 or 13 billion dollars conical Phillips estimate we have to build the ports uh, to have the icebreakers here the icebreakers shouldn't be in Seattle they should be here and it's here where we're going to break Russia's 
monopoly. We have to build housing uh, to, for the new uh, fighter jet uh, families who are coming here. There's a lot of things that have to be built. The general fund number that, that was given of two to three hundred million dollars in my mind is too low. The additional funds from the federal government, from public-private partnerships, and from recycling capital, from taking things that we built, that we own, that the state no longer needs to own, can get us to a budget of over $500 million. And I think that's where we need to be. And we need to leverage much, much more uh, private investment in our state. Thank you. Thank you. Now we'll take a few audience questions. You'll have 45 seconds to respond. Mr. Dunleavy, you'll go first. Here's the question. Do you support the Pioneer Homes? Uh, yes, and I also support going forward, looking at different ways to take care of our growing senior population. There's uh, some unique uh, approaches that are occurring all over the country. For example, in our own state, the HFC, we passed a uh, we passed a bill to enable the HFC a couple years ago to build private and commercial structures together. So, for example, you can have senior courts or senior communities put together where you have housing for seniors, but also stores and doctors' offices um, and uh, recreation facilities that help pay for those facilities as our population grows. And I just want to do a follow. -up. The two to three hundred million dollars I mentioned was a minimum in terms of the capital project or capital budget moving forward. And thank you. Mr. Heikes, do you need the question repeated? Can you say that a little bit louder? Do you support the Pioneer Homes? Absolutely. Um, I was at the Pioneer, my dad uh, used to play music at the Pioneer Home. He was like 80 years old and he dragged his karaoke down there about twice a month. He entertained the old folks. and. Uh, he did that up until the last month or six weeks before he died. Yes, I support. I supported. I'm not that in, in, in involved as Mr. Dunleavy has put out, but yes, the, the Pioneer Home and, the, and what he said makes a whole lot of sense. So we got to take care of our seniors. Um, my mom's in a home right now. Uh, my brother's taking care of her. So yeah, I, I know about old folks to take care of. So. Thank you. Mr. Halatku, would you like the question repeated? No, I am okay. I, uh, I support the seniority. Also, I don't support another things. I got uh, some friend I got with him and a doctor, he's disabled. And uh, each visit just put on the scale and couple things, $300. That's crazy. We need to be careful with these doctors. They take all the money from the insurance, and they don't have so much money over there, and a couple has done what is going on with them. If I'll be governor, the seniority will be respect like my family, and I will take care of them like my parents, because nobody pay much attention. They go to the doctors. The money go away for a couple's case and a couple things. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Sheldon. Yes, absolutely. I support the Pioneer Homes. Uh, these are our citizens of Alaska that would, I highly respect and honor. My mother is 92 years old. She's still alive and she's in a Pioneer Home. And I think the cost of Pioneer Homes are exaggerated too high. These Pioneer Homes need to be looked into to make sure that we're not overpressing our, our mothers and our fathers that are living in these homes. So yes, I really appreciate their service, what they are doing to help our mothers and fathers, and we should continue that process, but at the same time, streamline it so that our citizens are not paying too much and being burdened by taxes and what have you, so yes. Thank you. Mr. Treadwell. I was in the uh, Sitka Pioneer home on Sunday for uh, lunch with my former boss, uh, and uh, I do support our Pioneer homes. I also know from having served as Lieutenant Governor, we've got two very hard working senior commissions in this state that have been working on the challenge of senior housing. I know many people who also provide private senior housing. Their biggest complaint is the paperwork the state forces on them. If you have a 95 year old Alzheimer's patient, why does the state need to come inspect that next year again uh, to see if that patient still has Alzheimer's? Uh, that was a question asked to me the other day. We are burdening our senior care with excess costs 
and without being using common sense. And we need to help expand senior care in Alaska. Thank you. All right, second audience question. 